the Rode NT1 microphone. Today we're going to do a little unboxing video to unbox not one but two Rode NT1 microphones. So as I'm unboxing the video I'm going to ramble on and uh, I guess have a little complain about issues I've been having over the last uh, number of months and I'm hoping this will help me to uh, not eliminate but to have alternatives to certain problems that I uh, have been having so let's get to it so we have the Rode NT1 microphone this is a uh, large condenser microphone so to be honest, I have no idea how they're going to sound or how well they're going to work. But we're going to try them out. So me, I'm a, a big fan of Rode microphones, even after the story you're going to hear over the next however long this video is going to go for. So we have stuff in the box. Right. So we have the most important part. That is the microphone. So I'll just bring that down a little bit. The typical I love NT1 sticker, not I love Rode. Oh, user manual. I wonder if that's a good sound. So we got a little book, a little washer thing. And that's about it for that. The next part is the shock mount. So the uh, shock mount is quite a large piece of this microphone. So it's the uh, shock mount plus the um, mounting and uh, Pop filter. So the uh, shock mounts made by Rycoat, I believe it is, and I believe this microphone has a internal shock mount as well. So I guess the microphone just sits in there. Piece of metal for something. And this must be the pop filter. Oh, interesting pop filter. It's like a dual layer pop filter. Alright. Well, there wasn't really much to it. Didn't expect there to be a lot, but... Um, so I guess this unboxing video is going to be short. So here we have the Rode NT1. World's quietest one inch cardioid condenser microphone the complete recording kit so in theory this should be 
quite good for voice recordings. Uh, singing, if you're game to do singing. Um, so the reason why I wanted to get uh, these microphones is A, their road, uh, 10 year warranty, um, support for the good, and B, the reason I come to the part of the video where I'm going to rant a little bit is I've been having problems with microphones now for four months. And to be honest, I thought I had the problem fixed. I need to plug them back in and see there's still a problem this morning, so. Something in here. Ah, no, must have missed that one. We'll go through all this stuff in a minute. stuff is open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you down a little bit closer into the uh, picture and um, I'll talk a little bit more. So just one sec. Okay, so we're just going to go through some of the bits and pieces here. So, this here is the So we're going to go through some of the uh, bits and pieces here. Uh, this is going to be the shock mount. So this here stops the vibration. So any vibrations coming in from the floor or uh, bumping it will be um, reduced. And apparently,
Okay, so this here is the uh, suspension mount. So it has these rubber suspension points that are sort of double joined. Um, they're not soft rubber, they're sort of hard plastic. So it feels like they'll have a decent amount of life into them. Um, you put your pop filter in here, which I would assume should just pop. I guess it just pops in there with a little bit of force. Typical road stuff, very, very tight. Um, got a little thing here to make it rotate. Um, that's about it. I'm guessing the microphone is going to sit like that, so you can see the, the the condenser inside. So there should be some more suspension mounting inside. Okay, so we shall These guys just screw in to hold in place. Okay, so that there is the Rode microphone. Um, seems to be quite solid, so it feels quite good. It sits there quite nicely, and I'm assuming these are to pop over it just to keep the dust off of it while it's uh, uh, not being used. So there's one all set up, but no pop filter. Let's have another guy trying to get this pop filter in. There you go, that one slid in quite easily. Alright, next microphone. We got um, quite a uh, solid and, and uh, heavy feel to them, so they feel sort of quite good. Um, so I'm looking forward to using them, so. Alright, so the, the reason why I got these is, you'll see this microphone here, so, <laughs> so um, I've been having issues with uh, microphones um, for quite a while now, ever since I tried to go four channel microphone recording, and uh, I give Rode credit, I sent um, them back to be repaired and um, they couldn't actually find the problem and they didn't, they replaced parts in it and it's, it's really strange where I've been having this issue where they sort of work for a day and then they have this fault. Um, and so I sent them back to Rode and They replaced them with different microphones. So I'm on my third set of. Uh, so the first set of microphones was sent back, and then I received them back, and they worked, and they didn't work. So I sent them back again, and then they gave me a different set of microphones, and they worked for a day, and then they start working again, and so basically having a fault three times. I assumed that there was something else damaging the microphones. All right, pop 
filters in. So, yeah, so I assumed there was something wrong with the microphones. And, I mean, I, sorry, I assumed that there was something killing the microphones. So there is the, my old Rode NT5s. Um, my old Rode NT5s with the modified capsule on them. And so I thought my, maybe my preamps was killing the microphone. So uh, a few days ago, I took my preamps to a friend of mine and we tested the preamps in a number of different ways. And we couldn't find any issues. All right, so I'm gonna bring it back to the wide view. One sec. So having problems with the uh, the uh, wide view. So we tested the preamps and um, we found that both preamps were working identical. So we uh, tested both the preamps and we found that the preamps were both functioning identical. So that eliminated the preamps themselves killing the microphone. So we pulled apart the microphone that was bad because only one was bad. And after spending a little bit of time, we found a piece of hair crossing contacts. We actually found a piece of wire mesh inside the microphone wrapped around. And before that, we could reproduce a problem in the workshop. And then afterwards, the problem went away. And so that was uh, two days ago. So I plugged this in just before and the problem's back again. Uh, it's an incredibly frustrating problem to find and fix. So I've had two preamps. I've had some good microphones to use as extra microphones and I've used them a couple of times, but um, yeah, they're dead in the water right now. So that brings me to these. I wanted another set of microphones that I can rely on, something that I can just plug in and they're going to work. So I hope this is going to work. So, Oh man, my microphone stands are going to not like this. These microphones are so heavy. Just give me a sec. So these are cheap microphone stands. Um, I got some better ones that are being used right now. And I need a coin. Oh, 
put my uh, Rode microphones back to bed. So I can't say um, enough good things about Rode. Um, Rode have definitely did everything that they can to fix a problem, and to be honest, it should be fixed. Um, but there's just something going on that can't work out, and it's incredibly frustrating. So I'm hoping that this will fix the problem. Hang on. We have one road microphone. All set up, ready to go. Let's get another one going. So what we'll do is we'll... Um, I'm scared to do this. Mount them, plug them in, and we will see what they sound like. Alright, I'm going to stop it here and I'll set the mics up and I'll, uh, see how we go.